Hello and welcome to the Metabolic Classroom. My name is Professor Ben Bickman. I am a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. Today's lecture topic is rapamycin. Along with that comes uh, a lot of thoughts where you hear that word and you immediately are making some connections. And I want you to make those connections. If among the handful of connections you may be making, longevity is at the top of the list, then you are in the right place. This is the lecture for you. I am going to present uh, during the lecture a bit of, a, I hope, a bit of a nuanced view, highlighting some of the justification for its use, but my bias will become, I think, a little clearer uh, because it's informed by what I consider to be a pretty substantial amount of evidence that is not often discussed that encourages us to, well, have a more nuanced and, and I would say balanced and perhaps even a slightly negative view when it comes to rapamycin use, especially how it's used and how it's talked about. So how it's talked about is overwhelmingly in the context of longevity. And look, I get it. Everyone wants to live a long, healthy life. And this focus of longevity where rapamycin is discussed is wholly centered on an intracellular protein called mTOR, it is mammalian target of rapamycin. So this is one of those instances where the drug was used and the use of the drug identified a, a target, uh, in other words, what, which was then called mTOR. Um, the evidence is thematically revolved, uh, revolves around this idea that mTOR inhibition is going to allow an organism to live longer. Now, as we sort of finish the introduction and move on, despite the enthusiasm and the the claims that many uh, bring when they talk about rapamycin, the actual application of rapamycin in human studies looking at aging is incredibly uncertain. Uh, and I would suggest that the risks, um, the, uh, that the negative side effects, in fact, outweigh any, any possible positive benefit. Basically, as the overview, mTOR is one of those critical cellular mediators that affects the ability of the cell to grow. It influences the metabolism of the cell, including um, with nutrient metabolism, including protein synthesis. This, no surprise, means that mTOR is quite relevant in muscle. And, and I want you to be thinking of the muscle. And I even want that announcement, that, that um, news, that fact to sit in your mind and have you consider it when you start thinking, is this something I actually want to be inhibiting all the time? Uh, now, the focus on mTOR has led to a focus on protein because protein, when, when you eat dietary protein, it is converted into amino acids, which are then absorbed and now are flowing through the blood. Um, or you just are eating the amino acids directly, depending on what your supplement may be. Amino acids will activate mTOR. And this then, if, if you believe inhibiting mTOR is a solution to promoting longevity, then you are okay with that. Then you don't mind if, if you're restricting protein. You know, more protein means more mTOR. If mTOR is activated, that means a cell or an organism is going to age faster. All right, well then let's just bring down the protein thereby lowering amino acids, thereby reducing mTOR activation, thereby promoting longevity. Um, now the organism will live a little longer. That, that is the absolute crystallized viewpoint when it comes to uh, protein restriction, which undoubtedly you've heard of. If you've kept your finger on the pulse of longevity research at all, you know that there is a, a, a very substantial um, Comp a collection of voices that declare that protein is the villain here. And it is completely because of protein's ability to activate mTOR. Now, I am going to focus on the role of insulin later on and just show you how silly I think that is. One reason it's also silly is that some of the most ardent advocates of such a view, their own evidence challenges that, where um, people find that uh, the older you get, the less protein you eat, the higher your mortality is. Let me just say that again, um, that there is this, uh, this, this correlation 
where if, if the older the person's getting, the more protein they're eating, the less they are likely to die, especially if it's animal protein. There was a huge multi-country study published years ago. I'll make sure that's in the show notes that you can read the documented this, that the populations that had the highest animal protein consumption had the, were the most likely to live a long time. 